Hey Workshop Gang, I'm back with another video on my Aaron's Icon lawnmower. I did a video two years ago on a mower that I had actually bought four years ago and I've had people ask me how it's doing, whether I've had any problems, and so I thought I'd do another video and show you the status of the mower. Now I have not, I've used it once this year um, and I haven't had any problems starting it or anything like that. So I'm going to do a cold start on it and we'll see how it goes. As you can see, at least from here, it's pretty dirty. I've got it in my standard issue <laughs> storage shed and uh, all kinds of other stuff in there uh, as we all do. We stockpile our junk in our little sheds, right? So let me uh, start it up and I'll have to move the camera because I don't want to back into it. While I'm here, I'm going to take a look at the oil. Gonna knock any of the dust and junk off of it. You know, I think it was my first video I showed doing the oil change. And I mentioned about checking it. So, oil still looks good. And of course, when you do this, I've, I've mentioned before, you're supposed to do it to where you put it in and just make contact with the top. You don't thread it down. So if I pull this out and I look at it, you know, it's oh, it looks like it's over full, but it's actually not because it would be that high if I had the cap just sitting on top. I'm not going to wipe that off or anything and let that go. Okay, to start this, make sure your parking brake is on. That way you can get off of it if you need to. Parking brake on. I'll pull the choke up briefly. Turn the key to start. Push the choke down. We'll see what happens. As you can see, it's pretty dirty. I don't wash this every time I use it. Uh, the only time I've really cleaned it is when I did that pressure washing on the video that I did two years ago. So this is how you see it. I'm not hiding anything. It's, you know, dirty and it doesn't give me any problem. So um, I'm not focused on keeping it spotless. I don't really get much out of that. But I will say things are holding up well. Um, I did a video where I sharpen these blades and I don't know if you can see that very well they could use a resharpening obviously you should keep keep that sharp get good cuts on your grass um, but I've been you know pretty satisfied with what I'm getting out of this so I'll probably sharpen these up again this year as far as any kind of issues um, I don't have any I mean honestly this thing's been running great uh, I do keep this cover up you know, when I put it inside the shed, just a little tether that I put on there, a little strap. Um, I can't complain. Uh, the only thing that I've run into at all, in my, in my case, because I have this pitch angle on the shed, you know, it sits up uh, maybe 10 inches or a foot, I have had issue in the past where this deflector plate got caught and it bent down and this is just a deflector for your exhaust so it bent this down on me and I just pressed it back up and I got it up a little bit further than maybe it was from the factory and that took care of that uh, I haven't even looked at the filter so I know it says lift here so I, I could stand to clean the filter obviously it's got some junk accumulated on it so maybe I'll take care of that as well uh, the hours on it right now, I know this is upside down. Let me see if I can film this from the other side. The hours on it, now this isn't accurate. I've talked about it in the previous video. When I had this, when I got it, it actually said 100 hours on it. So the hour meter is at 93.6. Uh, I'll have to look at the records to show what the maintenance schedule is, you know, as far as what you need to service. Uh, but I honestly, I hate to say it, but I haven't done anything to this. Other than 
when I washed it and did that review, sharpened the blades, that's it. Um, I know it has grease points. You know, I'll probably put some grease in these wheels. I think there may be some others that I'd have to look them up because uh, <laughs> I haven't had anything wrong with it. So let me check those the paperwork and see what the uh, review is as far as doing maintenance. So here is the operator's manual. I go to this section where it says maintenance and it gives you the breakdown of when you're supposed to do what. So each use, you can see it has a variety of things. Check oil, check tire pressures, check blades, all that sort of thing. Every 25 hours, check the battery, clean the battery, clean carbon canister filter, check air filter, check fasteners, lubricate unit. I have not done that. Actually, I take that back. That's under 50 hours. And then under 100 hours, clean engine cooling system, check belts. And then every 400 hours, change hydraulic oil and filter on XL models. I do not have an XL model. And that is something I need to probably talk about as well. The uh, Some of the reviews I read on these or some of the problems people have mentioned is you can't change out the fluid in the hydrostatic drive. There is a way to do it from what I understand. I have not gotten to the point where I need to or want to do that just yet, but I'll probably have to do something. Um, it sounds like you have to take the things apart to change out the fluid, and I may do a video on that in the future. So it says check air filter and then check engine cooling system, and it says refer to engine manual for instructions. So let me look at that. Just an observation here, but it, you know, I changed the oil filter in 50 hours. This says change it every 200 hours. Replace air cleaner paper element every 200 hours. So I'm good to go on that stuff. Now, the engine cooling system, this is interesting. It says before you choose, check that the air inlet, rotary, screen, that area right there, is free from grass and debris and clean if necessary. Every 100 hours of operation, check and clean the cooling fins and inside of engine shrouds to remove grass, chafe, or dirt clogging the cooling system causing overheating. When cleaning, remove the air cleaner inside E, and that's the air cleaner in the back. Um, loosen the bolt C, D, and then remove the fan housing B. So if you see there, it shows these bolts on the perimeter of this housing. So, I'm going to do that. There's a bolt there. There's a bolt there. There's one there. There's one there on the oil neck. There's one up here, and then there's one over here. So it looks like it's going to take a little bit of effort to get that off. Okay, let's see if I can't make this happen. So I'm going to open this cover, and it says remove the filter. Luckily, it has a wing nut or a, a clamp with a wing nut built into it, let's say. Maybe wing nut isn't the right term. Wing bolt, maybe? It says to remove this. So, that worked. Get that out of the way. Might have been easier to take it loose at the bottom, but that requires a screwdriver. So I'm going to set that aside. And then, the other bolts around the perimeter are 3 8 So, I'm going to start with this one in the back here. Take advantage of your cup holder that oh you know what I just made an observation just so you know this is slotted so you don't have to take the bolt the whole way out that's a good thing it did say loosen it did not say remove so I jumped ahead of myself and was trying to remove them so I'm gonna get those out far enough that makes more sense by the way Another one over here, and if I, I just noticed too, the bolts are shouldered. It has this, I don't know if I can see that very well, the shouldered area, that's what it needs to clear when you take that off. So take that, put that back in place so I don't lose it. One more over here. 
Maybe I didn't take it out far enough. See what's holding this on. There's something that's resisting me. I see two screws here, but that's for the hinge. Kind of tricky to get in. Here's that one. You know what's odd? Is there's a little fuel device on the side here that probably should be removed to make it easier but I'm going to try to do it like the instructions say and maybe I'm just missing something obvious okay I'm doing what it says remove the filter loosen the bolts C D and that's only pointing to like three bolts, but there's more than that. And then remove the fan housing. I'm going to try something. Hold on. Okay, just to satisfy my curiosity, I want to take these pins out and hold this little grill cover on. that aha uh -huh. so why wouldn't I tell you about that this guard right here you can't take this cover off unless you take this off wonderful so I don't know what number that star is if my little set is accurate it'd be like a number 30 so I'm going to use a quarter inch socket to drive these out, or remove them I should say. Take that off. Yeah, that makes more sense. Now, the other thing here. As I mentioned, it has this fuel control unit on the side. As I was trying to say, it has this little control unit here on the side. I'm going to take that off too. Two screws holding that on. And again, I'm just doing this, well, to try to follow the procedures, but that makes it a lot easier to get that cover off. It's a whole lot easier. Oh, don't lose that. Don't lose that, those are shims. I want to make sure those stay where they belong there. Then it's a good chance to look at some things while we're here. So it's talking about making sure these are clean. I'm pretty lucky. By appearance, there's really not much of anything accumulated in there. So that's a good thing. Uh, you can see there's some, some rust here, but that's fine. I mean, that's just a, uh, for the electronic ignition signals for the uh, spark plugs so that won't hurt anything again don't use don't lose these shims make sure they stay in place and as I was saying these bolts have this little shoulder on them the one for the oil is actually longer the little shoulder area is longer so it holds that and there's your starter you can look at the condition of the teeth while you're here if you want they're designed to interlock into the flywheel so that looks fine no serious wear there that looks good you know and I haven't cleaned this you know it's 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 filthy this probably has it I know it has, I haven't cleaned it since I did the previous video where I pressure washed it now I'll just put all that back together because there's really nothing I need to do
point out since I'm at this location, this little bolt here on the side, it has a little bracket and that bracket is holding the fuel line. But the bracket is also fighting this slipping over. So you might want to get to that one first. Just hold the bracket out away from it and slip it over like that. Okay, now one more thing, the air filter. He talked about cleaning it and he said you can gently tap it on the ground so you can see a bunch of junk coming out of it. A bunch of junk. That's a lot to come out of an air filter. A lot of fine stuff. So, <laughs> I may even take an air hose and blow this out just to get rid of a bunch of the little stuff that I can't get loose at the moment. But there's a lot coming out of there. So that's a, the uh, debris pile, and this is after I blew it out with an air hose. Good to go. Okay, now that that's all clean, open that up, pull back on this neck a little bit, see if I can't get this in there without too much trouble. There we go. Bring that collar up again, it has that wing bolt, I guess I should say. You know, unless I'm missing something, the only things that I can see to grease are these front wheels. So, clean that off. Pop that on. I don't see anywhere where it seeps out. So I just did 15. Just a number. Other than that, I can't find any other places to grease. I don't see anything. I, I look all over, other than maybe taking all the covers off of the deck unit. But I looked through the manual. I couldn't see anything. It said grease this or grease that. So I think that's it. Well, what can I say? It's a good mower. I probably abuse it more than I should. But you know, doing some maintenance on these things, not that difficult. Uh, the only thing I have to be concerned with in the future. Is changing out that fluid in the hydrostatic drive and that's gonna be it so I'm gonna mow my yard enjoy your day
a little bonus footage, I guess. Somebody, or I had done a video on this before, this Cobalt 40 Volt Max Weed Eater. If you haven't seen that video, I should just go back and check it out. Somebody asked me how long the battery lasts. I don't know specifically, but this has been hanging up in the shed since last summer or fall. I have not charged it. I just pulled it out of the shed and it still had a charge. And I just ran it for about 20 minutes and it still has power. I have not done anything else to it. I have not charged it. So maybe that doesn't give you the exact time, but this tells you that it'll hold a charge for quite a while. So the yard looks good. No waves, no choppiness. The mower's still cutting great. And if you'll notice, I have two patches of clover out here. I don't mow that. And the reason for that is because honeybees like clover. And so, in fact, there's one right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope you can. But these uh, honeybees come over here and get their uh, pollen and move on. So, I know it may seem odd, but I don't put any chemicals on my yard. And uh, if I can help out the honeybees, <laughs> I'll do it. So. You're still here? You can go. I'm going to be mowing. Catch you next time. So I'm going to use a short little 3 8 uh, or yeah, sorry. Oh, you're still here? <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> you blinking? Blinky blink? Okay. Oh, you're still here? Well, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.